Liberty Nation with Tim Donner. Well, we're told by polling organizations that Joe Biden is well ahead of President Trump in the race for president. But whether he is or not, no one will deny that the outcome of the election rests essentially on six battleground states where the outcomes are still in doubt. Indeed, Biden's reported lead in those battlegrounds is much smaller than in the national numbers. The six swing states are Florida, Arizona, North Carolina, all won by Trump in 2016, along with Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, all also captured by Trump four years ago, the first time a Republican has won any of those states since the 20th century. And that trio of states is being heavily targeted by Democrats vowing never to take them for granted again. Now, if Trump wins in those first three states, all the focus will center on those states behind what used to be called the Blue Wall. But no longer, after Trump shocked the world by winning them all by narrow margins in 2016. What they have in common, those last trio of states, of course, is that they represent the American heartland. And so it is time to bring in LibertyNation.com's gal on the ground in the heartland, the inimitable Sarah Cowgill. Sarah, welcome back to Liberty Nation Radio. Hello, Tim. What? Well, that was just like the best introduction ever. Well, you're, you're suffering from a lack of good introductions, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so Sarah, give us a sense of the vibe, the buzz, the pulse on the ground as you perceive it out in your neck of the woods. Does this lead Biden reportedly holds in all these heartland states seem genuine? And if so, why? And if not, why not? I do not see with my contacts and my friends and my sources across the heartland, I do not see biden inching up or moving ahead of trump any way shape or form and maybe i'm looking in the wrong nook and cranny but i'm not seeing it whatsoever well compare for us the buzz around trump in the heartland four years ago when he was an upstart challenger to today when he's president well four years ago people were a little on the fence trump is not a republican uh, he has been a registered Republican. He's been a registered Democrat, but he tends to to, you know, support the things that he cares about and support the policies and issues that he believes are, you know, America first oriented. A lot of people were on the fence because of his bombastic style and his attitude. And and, you know, he literally just manhandled those other candidates on the stage, you know, during the debate season. So. You know, when you've got that kind of personality and people were still kind of iffy about um, in 2016 and they still voted for him over a Democrat. Now, of course, Hillary Clinton was not very likable. I don't think Kamala Harris is likable either. And everybody knows that she's being set up as the the takeover person. Um, So this time around, those same people that might have been on the fence who have since embraced Trump and his policies and what he's doing for the country, there there's no doubt in their mind who they're voting for. I can't find anybody who's out there on the fence, you know, waiting for the magic bullet to tell them who to take out and who to vote for. I, I don't I don't see it at all. I think his base has only grown over the last four years. Have you met any voters in your travels? that voted for Trump last time that say they will not vote for him this time? Not a single one. Zero. And I mean, it's, you know, I meet with the old guys at the corner cafe and they talk politics and the guy who hated Trump four years ago still hates him and everybody else that voted for Trump still voting for him. But Sarah, we're led to believe that Joe Biden is going over bigger in the heartland than Hillary Clinton four years ago. Do you see that? No. I I see people talking about his cognitive decline. I see people saying we don't want Kamala Harris as the president, and that's what they're doing. They're doing an end run around the whole process. I see a lot of that kind of discussion. I don't see anybody saying around here, even with the elderly people, even with people who 
um, you know, the polls are shouting from the rooftops. Oh my gosh, that that 80 year old just said she's voting for Biden. I don't see that here. And it, and it goes from the young people here all the way up to the senior citizens. I, I don't see any kind of love for Biden here. I, a lot of it has to do with the Obama years. Some of it has to do with the his son, you know, and his problems, Hunter's problems with the Ukraine deals. You know, you see some people wanting to fight that, but they're, I don't, I think in the, in the long term, they're going to hold their nose and they're going to vote for Trump because they don't want socialism. You, you're in the anti-socialism world when you're between the Appalachians and the Rockies. Okay, Sarah. Well, thanks for joining us once again. Stay safe out there in flyover country. Hey, I will. Thanks for having me, Tim. It's always a good time. Extra, extra, read all about it. Election 2020 Big Bottom Flash Reports are coming. On election night, at the bottom of every hour, LibertyNation.com will give you election night 2020, 90 seconds at a time, with our Big Bottom Flash Reports. You'll get the drop with our one-stop shop. Tune into LibertyNation.com on election night for our Big Bottom Flash Reports at the bottom of every hour. LibertyNation.com.